SNP leader Stephen Flynn. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, as someone who spends more money heating their swimming pool than the total value of the UK state pension, I think it's safe to say that the Prime Minister might not be as invested in this topic as some others. But let's afford him the opportunity to clear up any confusion. Will he commit his party, the Conservative Party, to maintaining the state pension triple lock beyond the next general election? Yes or no? Prime Minister. Oh, Mr. Mr Speaker, this is the party that introduced the triple lock. Mr. Speaker. This is the party that has delivered a £3,000 increase in the state pension since 2010. It's also the parties that ensure that there are 200,000 fewer pensioners living in poverty today and this winter ensuring that pensioners get an extra £300 alongside their winter fuel payment to support them through the challenging times with inflation. So, Mr Speaker, our track record is clear. There is one party in this House that has always stood up for our pensioners, and that is the Conservative Party. <laughs> Mr Speaker, I don't think we heard a yes there. And you'll imagine my shock, my utter surprise, that we appear to have consensus once again between the Conservative Party and the Labour Party on this most important of issues, despite the promises that were made to the people of Scotland in 2014 and despite the clear statements from the likes of Gordon Brown that the only way to protect your pension is to remain within the UK. How hollow those words are now. So may I ask the Prime Minister, who does he think will scrap the state pension triple lock first? His government or the Labour Party's government? Well, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I said, it, thanks to the actions of this government, pensioners in Scotland are receiving record increases in their state pension, £870 this year, extra support with the cost of living this winter. This is the government that introduced and remains committed to the triple lock, but he does raise a good point, Mr Speaker. Pensioners in Scotland should know the reason they can rely on the state pension, not just today but for years to come, because of the strength of our union and the strength of our United Kingdom government.